I mean, this game is so much experience based. A lot of your opinions are based on your own experience. It's hard to like watch other people play and like form your judgments on how items or synergies or builds, how good they are. But sometimes you just fundamentally don't play or use stuff correctly. So your your opinion might just be off because you your understanding is poor. I should be I should be telling myself this, right? Not you guys. Legend here. We've got 10 items here. You guys want to go through an order or should we uh argue about which which item belongs in S tier? Which or what it, what's the best item out of all 10? You want to go in order? In order is easier. All right, let's do it. Curus first. Where do we want Curus at, guys? Curus gives plus 15 armor. Uh, unique passive increases armor of allies within 300 yards by 10. So that's a pretty big area. If you put it in the front row, it's hitting everything on the front row. If you put it in one of the middle two squares on the front row, it's hitting everything on the front row except for the unit furthest away from whichever side of the center you put it on. So if you put it left to center by one a square then the unit on the far right is not going to get hit by this but everything to the right and to the left within three squares is going to get hit so specifically if you're playing this in nine warriors you want to try to put it on something in the very center of the board so it covers your whole team and then a unique passive reduces the armor of enemies same thing with the enemies hitting a very big area of negative 10 F tier, B tier, D, it used to give you attack speed plus slow down an enemy, now only armor. This is a big nerf. Yeah, we can't really judge this based on what it used to be because that was a completely different item system. Th that version of Curus is like built for a more condensed item system where all the items had more stuff on them. It's an aura, so it moves with the peace wheel. So I understand that. I'm just saying like at the beginning of the fight, if you put it in the center middle of the board is going to cover that area c tier i really choose it does it counter knights okay this item actually gives the user 25 armor and 10 to its allies correct 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 item is great in warriors knights and hunter it's decent start c please all right guys here's my take this item is almost worthless if the meta has a lot of four witcher players in it if the meta doesn't have a lot of four witcher players in it then this item becomes much better so in my mind because the meta has maybe one four witcher player every game maybe some games have no four witcher players i think this makes this like a tier but i feel like no one's no one ranked it that high oh chapman rate rated it in a and dark physicist rated it in s so we had two people who did rate it that high but most everyone else is rating it at a c let's throw it let let's just start it in b tier but i i'm gonna make a case to move it up later okay we'll start in b tier we'll split the difference between the a's and the c's that way nobody's happy instead of making half of you happy now no one's happy all right <clears throat> scythe of vice magic damage plus 60 percent which is huge compare that to like um storm guy or uh change gives plus 30 percent okay so scythe gives plus 60 percent that's crazy put that on thunder spirit or or uh, tortola or god of thunder and then unique active turns enemy with the highest value into a penguin for five seconds so you hit their fallen witcher you hit their avenge knight you hit their sniper you hit their uh their two-star uh spacewalker their two-star lancer the only the only thing that counters there's only one thing in the entire game that counters scythe of ice and it's the item eternity nothing else in the game can counter this from hexing their best unit all right we're getting a, a lot of s's and i'm in complete agreement i feel like you can snap pick this against anyone who's not playing eternity regardless of what build you're playing so scout 
if it's 1v1 or there's two or three people left in the lobby, scout their, go to their boards, check their item bags. If they don't have Eternity and they've already like reforged other items, they're not about to reforge for it, uh, grab this scythe for sure. All right, next item is Mjolnir. Plus 60% attack speed, which is crazy fast. Compare that to like um, Maelstrom is plus 30%. So you're doubling that. And then it has uh, the unique ability or unique passive of uh, each base attack has a 20% chance of releasing a lightning bolt, which the lightning bolt can bounce up to five times and each bolt does 200 damage. So this could theoretically do a thousand magical damage, you know, one out of every five attacks. So if you put this on something that attacks really fast, like this is going to make it attack fast to begin with, but you put this on Sacred Lancer, uh, you put it on like Abyssal Crawler or Shadow Crawler or Sniper, obviously put this in 600. That's where it's really, really good is 600. Or if you're running Six Glacier, you play this with Six Glacier. This is just going to like zapping everything. And there's like basically no cooldown time, 0.5 seconds. All right. We're getting mostly A and uh, S. All right, to me, Mjolnir is an S tier. It's To me, it's the best best melee item in the game. All right. Next, we have Blood Blast Skull. <laughs> Thinking Mjolnir is a B tier just like invalidates all the rest of your opinions. Come on, dude. All right. Blood Bath Skull. Base attack lifesteal 45%. Ability lifesteal 45%. Unique passive the carrier gains 1% base attack lifesteal and 1% ability lifesteal for every 4% HP lost. Basically, the longer your unit survives, the more and more lifesteal it's generating on top of the base lifesteal that it already has to start. So if you're getting into these long 1v1 fights, like you're carrying Sacred Lancer, you're carrying Nightmare and like Divinity, you're carrying Avenge Knight, anything that's going to survive, like like the rounds going past 30 seconds every time, this becomes much, much better. Let's do a 1v1. You pick two Mjolnirs and I'll pick one Blood Call and we'll see who wins. Interesting. This is a wannabe frantic, so F... <laughs> I prefer Bloodbath over Mjolnir. Interesting. Another S tier item. <laughs> Bloodbath is S S S S tier. All right. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go against a couple of people. I think some people are on the same page with me here, but I think a few of you think it deserves to be higher. I'm gonna start it off in A tier because if I'm presented Bloodbath Skull uh scythe and mjolnir i'm not taking blood basketball most of the time now if i get a second choice of legendaries then maybe i'll take blood basketball but i don't take it first it's not the first item i pick when i reforge for legendary items it's the second or third legendary item i take not it's almost never the first one i take so uh mania let's just move on to mania Remember, Calm Before Storm said Frantic is stronger than Bloodbath? I mean, Frantic Frantic costs less to make. It's 20% lifesteal, 30% attack. Frantic gives you attack speed, and Bloodbath doesn't give you anything other than lifesteal. There's no attack speed here. There's no attack damage here. All it is is lifesteal. So I kind of agree with him. I would rather have, like, double Frantic than... One blood basket. All right, mania, mania C tier, mania is S tier, mania is S tier. Mania is good, but you need mania needs support. It either needs to be on an item that has fast attack speed, which is either through your synergy, like you're playing glacier, or through your other items, like you have maelstrom and you have wooden clubs, or you already have mjolnir. Or it needs to go on something that hits multiple things with a base attack. It needs to be on like a Red Fox or an Ember Blade for it to get like really good value. So because of that, I don't think it can be S tier. 
because it needs support. Similar to like the way Blood Basketball needs support. So I think we can maybe put it in A tier for now, but it's probably on the weaker side of A tier. Are we are we comfortable with that? It, yeah, it's obviously very good in 600. That's another thing that already has fast attack speed built into it. If I'm playing 600, I'm going to take this over Mjolnir, maybe. That's a tough one. Like, I don't know, man. If you're playing six, six, uh, 600, do you want Mania or do you want Maelstrom, guys? Or Mjolnir, I mean. Do you want Mjolnir or Mania? <laughs> I get it. I get it, Cuddy. You like Blood Basketball. We we all get it. You obviously you want both, but I'm saying if you're given a shot, let's see, you're playing six hunter and you're offered mania, blood bath skull, and and judgment one. Obviously you're not gonna take judgment one because you're playing hunter. Are you gonna take Mjolnir or are you gonna take Mania? Anyway, let's just move on. Immortal. What do we think about Immortal? Plus nine hundred. Also has a unique active triggered when receiving lethal damage, gain ability, immunity, and become immune to all damage for three seconds. The effect takes place only once per battle. S S S. I'm in agreement. We're going to put this in S tier, but I'm going to make a note. I think this one's going to deserve a note. Because I don't think you should take Immortal as your first item, like, 90% of the time. Unless your other two options are really bad. Unless your other options are, like, you know, Curious and Judgment 1. I think taking Immortal first is a mistake a lot of the time. But I still think it's S tier. Wills, why are you using this if you get this first, that last logic? It's so bad. What do you mean? So pick attack item first, then Immortal? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like you should take Mjolnir or Blood Skull or Mania first and then take Immortal second. If all you have is Immortal on your unit and you don't have any attack damage or any sustain, then Immortal's pointless. You're just going to die fast. You're just going to survive a little bit longer because you have a little bit more HP. But as soon as you die, after three seconds, you're just going to die again. You're not going to you're not going to be able to regenerate. Because you don't have any attack damage or, or lifesteal. Alright. Crown. Crown S. Crown is B. A. Dude, Crown is one I really struggle with. Because in certain builds, it feels like S tier. Like it's the best item you can pick. And in other builds, it, it feels very underwhelming. It's evasion is nice. Unless, of course, your opponent has Monkey King Kane. Then it becomes worthless. So then your base... Then you're relying on its... Uh, passive which deals 100 pure damage to enemies around it every two seconds so all enemies within two grids of it every two seconds 100 pure damage also uh enemies within same amount same distance have 20 percent chance to miss the target with their attacks unless of course they have monkey king cane this is great again against insects and beasts yes this is especially good in a, a six warlock build against those builds or a tanky build like uh, warriors or goblins against insects. And it's the best item you can pick if you're playing for martialist since uh, each of those uh, 100 pure damage activations have the chance of proccing the martialist uh, synergy and instantly killing a unit that's under 50 uh, percent hp i think this might be the highest a tier unit or the lowest s tier unit let's just put it in s tier for now what are you for real what about the martialist synergy thing yeah that's how it works that's why it's that's why part of the reason why i love playing for martialists yeah yeah plus if you put this on fallen witcher and you have a bunch of dazzling crowns all around the board with like multiple fallen witchers that makes it absolutely broken as well good point does mjolnir proc martialist uh, the lightning bolt um that's a really good question i think it does 
I, I'm, I'm not positive, but I'm like 60% positive that the Mjolnir Lightning Bolts would proc the Marshalus Synergy. Judgment Wand. Magical damage, 30%. Compare that to Scythe, which is 60%. This is equivalent to Storm Guide's magical damage. Plus, or not Storm Guide. Uh, this is equivalent to uh, Sorcerer's Chain. But it also has a unique active deals pure damage equal to 800 plus 5% of the max HP to one random enemy and 5% magical damage increase pure damage for 1% of match HP. If anyone knows what that means, you're a genius because to me that's very confusing. All I know is that it does some extra pure damage on top of its magical damage. It only does it to one random enemy, right? It's not that good. That I mean, that mana burst helps you in the 1v1 fight at the end I guess a little bit so like if you put let I think like the best case for judgment one is putting it on something that goes off fairly fast in a divinity build like a god of thunder or a thunder spirit it's a little bit worse on tortola because tortola's ability takes too long to cast but it can help you win the 1v1 fight in a divinity with or even a non-divinity, even just a regular mage build with like a God of Thunder or a Thunder Spirit. I think Judgment One is really can really uh, pay off in a four divinity build, but it's much, it's way more mediocre in a regular mage like a mage shaman build. For that, for that, I think it should be a B B tier. Keep in mind, this did get nerfed, guys. This used to be a lot stronger. Like it used to do even more pure damage. The old version would have been rated higher, but this version I think is fine in B tier. Alright. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with that uh sentiment, uh Kruganaut. Antique longsword, plus five hundred attack. If the home battle fails when wearing, it will be randomly dropped to the other players. The chance of obtaining it through a chest is one percent, and it cannot be reforged. Antique longsword F. S if you use the exploit. Yeah, we're gonna make we're gonna make a note. We're definitely gonna make a couple notes about this item. Thank you for bringing that up, Kruganat, because I forgot about that. Guys, compare this plus five hundred attack to mania plus fifty percent attack. Like let's like let, let, let's look at a, a good unit example. Fallen Witcher three star, three star Fallen Witcher, transformed attack damage is 240 so if you give it a uh, mania which is plus 50 percent attack it'll buff its attack from 240 to 360 but if you put antique longsword on it it'll buff it from 240 to 740 it's crazy antique longsword item is a gamble item you don't know who you will face on the late game and get countered so see antique longsword is s tier and it's because a couple reasons. One, it's just a crazy amount of attack damage. Secondly, there's an exploit in the game that if you unequip Antique Longsword before the fight ends, you won't lose it. So put Antique Longsword on your Fallen Witcher or on your Shadow Crawler or on your Sacred Lancer. If it looks like you're going to lose the fight, just pull it off. You won't drop it. And then you can use it for the next fight. I mean, I imagine that's going to get patched eventually, but... Yeah, and you... Guys, items that are equipped on your unit at the start of the round, those effects last the entire round. So, you can reforge your items or unequip your items, and your unit will still carry that effect. So... Yeah, like Krukenot said, just at the start of the round, unequip it. So you don't have to worry about it. Last item. F tier, no chance to obtain. I think I've gotten Longsword three times, maybe. Maybe twice. Maybe only twice. One of my I have it on YouTube, one of the games where I got it. Um Celestial Shield. This item's been nerfed like what twice? Because it was so good and broken. And they had to remove it from the game for a while because it was so broken. So it's not as good as it used to be, obviously. Has a 100% chance to block 50 damage upon receiving base attacks. 
So every base attack, it's taking 50, 50 damage less than it would. And then it has a unique passive 30% uh, chance to reflect all damage and unit targeted negative effects. So 30% chance that if you try to hex it with Scythe or you try to hit it with Doom or anything like that, it's going to reflect it back, right? Which is crazy. But it's only 30%, so it's not that high probability. Uh, for the same unit, damage and negative effects can only be reflected within three seconds. And block uh, can't be stacked, and the highest value takes precedence in calculation. But you explained this, and the devs will make a patch. Dude, it, I can tell you with 100% confidence that the devs give zero shit about my opinion. They don't know who I am. I could tell them where they could find a trillion dollars in their backyard and they wouldn't listen to me. Nothing I say goes goes in their ears, trust me. 30% is the probability for two pandas and that really sucks, yeah. The F is that passive name, tit for tat? You, you've heard the expression tit for tat before, correct? I think this belongs, uh, I think this is slightly better than Judgment One in terms of its impact. But I think it's only slightly better, so I think it's in the same tier. All right, what do we think of this list, guys? Do we need to move any of the uh, items up or down? We have no nothing below B tier, which is crazy. But I think for legendary items, that makes sense. You would really hate to hit the random button and get something below B tier. I am going to make a note here for the longsword and for immortal. No, for longsword, just cheap, bro. All right, uh, for, the, for the Immortal I put, normally best to pick attack buff or lifesteal buff first, unless playing Warlocks. You guys, are we in agreement with that? Or am I the only one who feels that's important to stress? They have Curus rated pretty high, surprisingly. I noticed some people really like Curus, and some people don't really care for it. I'm one of the people who doesn't really care for it. But I notice when I, when I stream... Chat always, whenever I go for a legendary item, chat always tells me to take Curus for some reason. So, I know there's lots of people out there that are Curus truth truthers. Yeah, the fact, I mean, the fact that they have the Penguin Staff as B tier kind of discredits their list. Because it's like the best, one of the best items. The thing is, is like they're all, they all have their situations where they're valuable, though you know. Like if your opponent has, but if your opponent already has, um, the reason that why they have, the reason why they have penguin staff so low is because they prioritize eternity so much, and they know that everyone's gonna pick eternity, so they know by by their logic everyone should pick eternity. So by their logic. Penguin Staff loses all its value. So I understand why... That's their train of thinking. I'm, I'm positive that's what, what's going on there. So maybe we should make a note on our site that it loses a lot of value once your opponent picks, his, picks Eternity. We can we can make that, that note. If I'm playing Mage, I roll for Epic Item. It depends on what I'm facing. A lot of times I like to have Judgment Wand and Mage if I'm facing stuff that, uh, like Knights, because you, you need that pure damage. You think remove, remove, um, I mean, they have Crown as their best item. And you guys are telling me to move Crown down? Move Crown to A tier? I mean, I can, I can hear the argument that Crown should be A tier. Oh, Crown was more buff back then? Okay, okay, that makes sense. Good, uh... I'm going to make a note that the site loses its impact if the opponent has eternity. Thank you guys oh so much for your help with uh, coming up with these tier lists. Hey guys, Wills here. Thank you so much to all of you who made it this far into the video. I really appreciate you guys for checking out my content. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, uh, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the algorithm and get this video in front of more people. If you haven't already, uh, definitely check out my other tier list videos for all the other uh, item rarities. 
Uh, also, guys, if you're not subscribed already, I really appreciate a subscription from you. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs by the end of this month. Uh, we're getting closer and closer every day, so I would really appreciate your help with that. I, again, I want to thank my Twitch chat for helping me build not only this list, but all the lists. Uh, they were super engaging, and uh, I really enjoyed doing this, so hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, seeing this type of thing. Uh, if you like this type of content, let me know, leave a comment, or if you would like to see something different, uh, as long as it's related to auto chess, let me know. Uh, I'll have a link to all the other tier list videos in the description. Also, I'll try to link it in the top right hand corner here. Also, uh, I'll have a link to images of all the tier lists if you guys want to bookmark it for uh, later. Uh, and I think that's it. So, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Peace. Thank you.